you are a 10-year-old and you are raped and you get pregnant, right? Rather than addressing the fact that 99% of the abortions that we're dealing, 99.9% of the abortions that we're dealing with are not in those circumstances at all. And it's just people that are having promiscuous sex and wanting to get rid of their children because they don't want, they're not prepared to be parents. Hey guys, welcome back to Bambi TV. Guys, I'm going to be reacting to Candice Owen Q&A abortion debate and advice. Guys, let's get straight into this. I don't know if it's stupid to say I'm neutral about pro-life or pro-choice. It's not stupid at all. Because I know that the person that I have a baby with will be my husband. So, but because not everybody has the same morals and the same principles as I do, um, and due to free will, people will have premarital sex. And when that happens, a baby will happen. Um, so wouldn't it be better for the child's sake and happiness to not be born at all and then to have a deadbeat father and a promiscuous mother or even when it comes to hap like or even when rape happens like personally if i was a kid and i know that my mom was raped and my dad is the rapist like yeah i would be sad like i i wouldn't want to be here mm -hmm. so what does it truly mean to be pro-life like are you pro-rape are you pro like Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's okay, guys. Let her ask the like question. That, like I think it's totally fine for you to ask the question. Go yeah. ahead, finish. Um, but it's like I'm all for, like, cause I'm all for like family values. Mm -hmm. But having a child raised like that, mm -hmm. what type of family value is that? Okay, great question. Thank you for asking it. Um, so I think I was pretty open about the fact that I used to be pro-choice, and so I want to first acknowledge what you're saying because one of the things that the left is really great at is arguing in extremes, right? The most extreme scenario. What if you are a 10-year-old and you are raped and you get pregnant, right? Rather than addressing the fact that 99% of the abortions that we're dealing, 99.9% of the abortions that we're dealing with are not in those circumstances yeah. at all, and it's just people that are having promiscuous sex and wanting to get rid of their children because they don't want, they're not prepared to be parents. Um, so I first want to say that you to, to argue into the extremes is not productive because as a government you have to rule uh, to create policies that are good for the majority of people. You're never going to get it perfect, but the majority of people. The second thing that I want to speak to is you saying that you don't think it's you know that situation that you would want to be born into. Well, I have done a lot of work with pro-life charities and they have had people who were the children of rape scenarios and they're glad to be alive. So it's, it's, it's not our decision to say whether or not someone's life is valuable. In order to hear what they think, they kind of have to be born, right? Yeah. And the last thing that I'll say as somebody who was raised in not the, the greatest circumstances and who came from a broken family, I sure as hell am glad that I was born. So thank you so much for your question. I totally understand it. I was just wondering, um, where do you think, you know, the average college, uh, conservative college student can land in a corporate environment that is changing just like the, institute, the college institutions did? Actually, I would disagree. Uh, the free markets kind of gets rid of BS pretty quickly. Um, I always say to people, man, if you are majoring in gender studies, what are you going to do with that degree? It might be time to stop and reevaluate. Yeah. Um, because I just got to tell you, nobody ever in my life once has said, quick, get a gender studies major here. We have an emergency. Um, and so at the end of the day, and as somebody who is an unapologetic free market capitalist, uh, the, the free markets will take care of it. They're not just going to be hiring gender studies majors at Goldman Sachs to fill some quota, right? Um, and when, you, know, you think Elon Musk is like, I'm going to hire a few, you know, people that majored in gender studies because I had the fill quota. No, at the end of the day, you actually are going to have to be skilled to enter the workforce. And I think that's actually part of the reason why when a lot of these students get out into the world, they're so angry because they can't make any money and they feel like the system has cheated them. And in many ways it has. You've been kind of rinsed and brainwashed with all these ideas, believing that if you pursued these social issues as degrees, now you're in tons of debt. You can't get a job because nobody Nobody thinks that you're really that smart because you, you know, studied all of these obscure topics. It is a bit unfair, and that's what I hope to undo, and that I help people have this awakening and understand that you gotta, you got to be able to provide something. you got to – way better to stay out of school learn how to fix air conditioners. I'm dead serious. They're making a ton of money, a killing. <laughs> learn how to work with your hands. Sure. Hi, um, so I'm a girl going through like high school and my school is very liberal. So what advice would you give to like conservative teenage girls? 
very hard on the teenager stuff because a lot of times, like in colleges, at least they can invite conservatives to speak. And when it's high school, it's a little different because you're under the age of 18, and so the state has a lot more control over you. Um, the, for, the advice that I tend to give to people that are in high school and people that are in middle school is really advice for their parents, um, and it's for parents to find their voices and to encourage your kids to stand up for themselves. There was the recent story, I don't know if you guys saw, of the kid that had the don't tread on me on his backpack. And you should just go find him if you haven't. Don't tread on this kid. I did a whole episode on it. And I think he was eight, nine years old, and he had a backpack, and the teacher said that it was racist to have the don't tread on me thing on his backpack. Not only was this kid so educated and basically told her she had no idea what she was talking about, but then he had his mother behind him in the administrator's office saying that she was not going to make him take this off of his back, the decal off of his backpack. And to be that sort of a student in the world, to know who you are, to assert who you are to these teachers, to not back down from it, but then to have the backing of your parents that say they're not going to tolerate it. Too many parents have become fearful of of being called a name, whatever that name is. You're a homophobe, you're a sexist, you're a racist. Half the time you're dealing with teachers and administration that have no idea what the heck they're talking about and they're trying to, you know, make you silent. They're just trying to silence you and to say that this is the way it's going to be. Students need to find their voice, but parents need to be able to back up that voice with a megaphone. So that's what I would Thank say. Thank you. Thank you so much. Guys, I love this. Like, I love the fact that she's able to inspire people and this is actually crazy. But like, let's go to the first part. What Candy said was right, because a lot of people who I said do abortion are people who, like, they know what they're doing. They can see the teacher coming in. Let's say they just don't heed to advice, and it's heartbreaking because I don't think anyone will be happy taking a child's life. If it's heartbreaking for everybody, but you know, I feel they have this kind of scenario. If I can take care of it, I should bring it in here, and. It's heartbreaking. I will admit, but like some people just do it because they just feel it's the best way to do it because if either you bring him here and you allow the child suffer and I don't know, things happen. But like I love the way Candace actually approached her answers. Like the way she gets to her answers, the way she breaks it down and makes you understand your question and the way she puts it is just amazing. To be honest, I would love to go to one of her seminars, but I feel she she's this kind of person that I will want to speak with personally, to be honest. But guys, I tell you what you think about this, so just to like, share, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time, guys. Bless.